Start, I'm going to start the meeting. Okay. <coughs> I'll call this meeting to order DPW Subcommittee and Town Council Wednesday, November 30th, 2023, 2022, 6 p.m. Veterans Room. Uh, the, the meeting is being recorded with audio and video. Uh, roll call. Councilor Marquette is here. Councilor Steve. Councilor Don. <coughs> Citizen Member Splain. Yeah. Citizen Member Lazo. Present. Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and approve joint DPW Town Council meeting minutes of November 16th, 2022. Right. Everybody have a chance to look at it? Yeah. Okay. Just one correction. You said Ray Tail Boulevard, it's Red Fox. Where's this? Yeah. So, no, item number four. And what was that again? It's Red Fox Boulevard. Oh, all right. I couldn't hear it very well. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, anything else? All those in favor? Thank you. One of Stan, sorry. Yeah, I understand. Uh, agenda item number four, Citizens Forum. Anybody have anything they want to talk about? Kevin, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, through you, at our meeting we had on the 16th, I brought up road plates. And let can all forget an update. They just added another seven more road plates in this town. I don't think road plates should be added after November 15th. They added five or six more on the corner. They're all in front of the old hospital spa on Sale Street. And then there's three more on Water Street that have been there for, I'd say at least a month, not even touched. I don't think we should have road plates down right now. No, neither do I. I've been, I've been on them about that, so I'll uh... Uh, I watched them lay them down today. It was four o'clock. That's new call, all new call, right? Yeah, and, and it, it falls back to the, the accountability is not there. I mean, it, we're letting Nuco run this town. <laughs> yeah, we have. Yes. Uh, I'll go with your brother first. Uh, we're kind of short-handed at DBW, so we got to cut them a pass. But um, what happens if we plow? I know we're not having snow right now, but you know what happens to those plates when we plow, right? Yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> So yeah, you know, any, any hole that's underneath it is, is, is yeah, where okay, our well, truck's at. Okay. Yeah, that's the right. I, I've made a couple of calls. Yeah, about it. Yeah, any emails. Pick them out. I think so. I, I don't like them at all. But they, they, you all set, Scott? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, I got a couple of manhole problems. Um, there's one on Main Street where Hamilton Street comes out at the bottom of the hill. There's a big crater open there, and it's right around the rim of the manhole. I'm afraid the manhole from the big truck is going to, the cover is going to break or move over and there'll be a hole there. It's right at the bottom when you stop at the stop sign. Oh, really? Right, you're right, coming down the Mill Street, that intersection. Okay. You're on Main Street Hill, you're going to stop there. Check that out. And the other one is the one in the center of Coombe Street, which Coombe Street comes out on Main. It seems like every time I go down there, it's going lower and lower. I don't know where it's going, but <laughs> I'm gonna go down. I do, I do, uh, <laughs> so that's the only two things I have. If you check those out, that'd be good. Thank you. China. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Right. Okay. Anybody else? None. All right. Thank you. Agenda item number five: discuss, review whether to recommend the town council accept the technical assistant grant from Mass DEP for eight thousand eight hundred. Authorize the town manager to sign any related paperwork. So, Second. I do have a correction on this one. Um, it's actually called Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Grant, SMRP Grant. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get the paperwork until after I'd already done the agenda. So if we could just have a, should we just do a friendly amendment yeah, on that? All right. Yes. Okay, any questions? Any questions on that? Anybody? Do you want to say something about it, Mr. Director? 
Uh, no, I mean, it was, uh, the emphasis was through uh, DEP that deemed Southbridge to properly operate a conforming program, and that program was specifically our recycling program. And in order to fulfill the, uh, the requisites of, of the grant, uh, that was, uh, that needed to be conducted in a, in a proficient manner. Um, so, the uh, Mass DEP has awarded the town of Southbridge recycling dividends program funds under the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program, and the amount allocated is $8,800, of which we plan on utilizing for outreach and education. We have a plan uh, that's, that's been enacted and we're going to continue with is uh, what it's going to uh, entail is getting the message out about the solid waste program. And that will, um, that will certainly identify a lot of the components that uh, are in transition right now. But in order to get this message out, we're planning on doing a mailing with the uh, census and additional <clears throat> mailings, which the cumulative effect would we're, we're estimating will cost up to seven thousand dollars out of those, those <coughs> just for that uh, those two mailings. And anything we we have left over, we're going to again take the approach of putting it forward with the education and outreach process, and that may entail developing a website. <coughs> or enhancing the website in order to uh, educate the citizens here in town about the solid waste program. All right, thank you. thank you. Any questions? No? Just a quick clarification. Got to um, this is separate from the, what we're talking about in the, in the trash committee, right? Excuse me? This is separate from what we're talking about in the trash committee, right? It, it is, but it, it's, it's, it can be used for that purpose. Okay. Right? So there's uh, the parameters set forth, which are outlined by DEP on what needs to be fulfilled uh, until, until many different uh, aspects from equipment, uh, model programming, we have uh, outreach and education, reuse, schools, source reduction, et cetera. Right. So we have to abide by that. Right. Again, uh, what we deemed uh, would, would be would be most needed is the outreach and education. Right. And in order to enact a viable approach with that um, and getting the message out, we're, we're limited to you know really five or six things we can do. Right. Okay? Okay. You all set? Yeah. All right. No further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item nine, number six, discuss, review, discuss petition for repairs to a private way, request for surface repairs of Lincoln Street up to $500 in accordance with Chapter 8, Section 8-102. Entertain a motion to remain to town council. Shane, did you want to talk about this? Yeah. Yeah. Getting them to settle, let me just see, okay. So just uh, through you, Mr. Chair, good evening. Um, the Italian Club has withdrawn this request. No problem. This is number seven. Oh, I'm here for number seven. Oh, you're not here for number seven. I'm not here six. for number six, no, I'm sorry. Right. I'm not a DPW guy. I'm sorry. Clearly, <laughs> 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 no, no, it's not. It's not. It's my mistake. Go ahead. Why don't you just stay then? All right, I got you. I'm up for like five other things, but not this one. It's pretty much just to um, fill some major holes that are down on the bottom of Lincoln Street. There's a couple of big, huge potholes that are coming up. And then just whenever surface left over material just to kind of cover it up, make it look a little bit better. All right. Have you seen that street next to that one? It's like some of those. Yeah. Those are like huge. Those are craters. <laughs> that street? Like that? Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. are like craters. From what I was told 
prior was that they're going to be doing all the gas lines and everything up on there, so they didn't want to waste any materials until the gas lines were done up on Gardner Street. That's what I was told prior. I don't There's know. No I didn't really look into that one fully, right. so I'm not 100% ready to talk about that one yet until I look into it a little bit more. Okay. Any questions? Kevin? My question is when we appropriate up to that $500, is that materials, is that labor, is that both? Because if that's both. $500 doesn't go too far. No, that's a big thing, yeah. Is that everything? Materials and everything? That's everything involved yeah. into it. Oh, it has been. I think we should review <coughs> that section chapter in the future. As, well, I mean, I thank think you. This, but just to follow up on Kevin said, I know that part of that is, is limitations in state law. I don't know if those if that those numbers are specific to state law or we just say that we're below whatever the limit is, but it might not be a bad idea since the cost of everything has certainly gone up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need all the time for hot mix, so I mean, yeah. Right. And that pothole will probably take like two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else? All those in favor? Thank you. Then item number seven, review, discuss the request for a handicapped parking space in front of 20 North Street, the Italian Club. Motion. Second. This one's yours, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, again, good evening. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the membership or the organization, the Italian Club, who contacted me several minutes ago, and they're withdrawing us. They're going to go in another direction. Okay. Okay. It's a lot So do we just vote to withdraw it or just withdraw it? I would request it just comes off the agenda, however you do that. Mm -hmm. yes. We'll go to pass over. We'll do pass over. Post 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 we don't even have to post 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 so however they else they choose to present it, that's up to them, not me. Exactly. Private process. So I guess not on the street, I don't care. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And agenda item number eight, review, discuss, expanding the no parking from here to corner. Parking zone in the area of 11 Charlton Street, 30 feet east uh, from its current location. Entertain a motion to recommend. So move. Second. Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Phil, actually, and I from the DBW were in this area. There's some issues with sight lines. Kind of a safety issue. There's been a sign similar to this in front of that 11 Child Street area for many, many years. But people are starting to park in front of it and it's going up and it's coming up into that Worcester and Central Street intersection. Mm -hmm. And I would just recommend that we move that sign for site line issues, safety issues. Okay. Any questions? Nope. All right. All those in favor? Thank you. Jedi item number nine review, discuss adding three foot tubular surface mounts, photo depiction attached, and line striping to improve sight lines on the following streets, an existing no parking zone located in front of 45 Hamilton Street, Crown Fried Chicken, an existing no parking, no parking zone located in the intersection of West Street and West Main Street adjacent to 85 Main Street, 25. 825 Main Street, Domino's Pizza, and an existing no parking zone located at 11 Charlton Street to the intersection of Central Street and Worcester Street. Entertain a motion to recommend to so move. Okay. Go ahead. Again, Mr. Chair, this has been this has been issues at these areas for several years now with sight lines. Crown fried chicken on the area of 45 Hamilton Street. As you're traveling down Hamilton Street towards Main Street, there's issues with customers going in. We're ticketing them, but it's not stopping the problem. They're still doing it. These tubular service mounts uh, will eliminate that problem. So, and it's just a diagram mm -hmm. or a depiction. This isn't actually what, this is pretty close to what they're gonna look like, what you have in your packet. But this picture was taken from another town yeah. and sent to me. So that's no, it's nowhere in Southbridge. That'd be the first. Um, the second would be Domino's Pizza. We've had issues with that intersection coming off of West Main Street, taking a right onto West Street, customer's park at Domino's. It's clearly marked, no parking. They signage there, the curbs are painted. We're tagging them. It's not. Uh, it's not um, stopping the problem. Right. So again, a couple of these mounts will eliminate that issue or make it more difficult to do. And 11 Challenge Street for the area where we just moved uh, uh, agenda number eight. Yep. This would add these surface mounts there also. And I know there's going to be a question about plowing, but I've seen these in every at Boston 
Cambridge, you know, uh, Auburn, and the DPW people, I'm happy Phil's here because I guess Phil had an issue with this too, but my recommendation would be these need to be installed. It's becoming an issue. They're going to just have to pull them, just move them, or it's snow season. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. take them out. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Or however, I mean, I'm not the resident expert here. You guys can tell me better. There's two different styles that you can get. You get a weighted one. Or you can get a permanent mounted one. I think if for a trial run, a weighted one would probably be the best bet for the time being. And then if it's something that we can work around during the winter time, then we can always do the, the permanently mounted ones. Hmm. Well, my question would be if they're weighted, are they kind of be stolen? How heavy are they? They can be screwed to the ground also. I would recommend weighted that, or, or bolted to the ground. I would recommend that they're at least bolted to the ground <laughs> in some fashion because they'll be stolen. <laughs> And it, not, nothing yeah. against it, you know, I'm just saying, road. <laughs> yeah, it happens in the city of Worcester, I've seen them move, the, sure. just it needs to be more of a permanent solution. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Dow. He, he, he can go for it. Councilor Steve. Okay. Um, if, if we put these in place, um, what impact will that have on road width and the ability of people, especially driving, driving, because yeah. especially on Hamilton Street, that street's already really narrow. No, nope. uh, yeah. for you, Mr. Chair, to Council Steve's. It, it shouldn't be an issue because when we go down and look at it and the way it was measured out, the road width isn't going to be, there's a parking space directly in front of all these where these two wheel mounts will be. Mm -hmm. So there's always, there's always, but the majority of the time there are vehicles parked there already. Uh -huh. So the road is, it's, you shouldn't be parked anywhere behind where these mounts are going oh, in okay. the first place. So the road won't become any more narrow. But that's the issue, okay. Okay. And that's it. Mm -hmm. now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chief, what's the difference if a car parked there and you put those posts? It's the same measure, or are you going to make it more tiny on the corners to, to so, drive up yep. to be able to have more clear place? Because if you put those in the car park, what's the difference? Through you, Mr. Chair, they will not be able to park there. We're going to make it impossible to fit a car there. No, correct, but I mean, uh, we are concerned with the safety, the yep. driver coming up, don't hit him. But it's already have the same space of the car park there. Is that possible to have them a little more uh, less wide on that corners? That is, if the if the car wide example of eight feet, it can be like six feet or yes. five feet. Yeah. Like this, you keep more space. Yeah. And if you, and Mr. Chair, if you look at the picture in the diagram, there are gradual progression out. So we, I intend on doing that. Of course, the DBW. I'm not going to go down there and do this myself. We'll measure it out. We'll make sure that it's safe. An engineer or a professional will look at it and make sure that it's good. No, you know, it's not going to cause any road hazards because it would defeat the purpose of putting them there if it's a hazard. That's right. Yeah. If, you, if you have them the same size of the vehicle, right. so it's the same thing. Thank you. No, they'll be adjusted. Go ahead, go ahead. So you know, Chief, Chief, what is the possibilities of your committee through traffic looking into Hamilton Street and I'm also going to say Central Street? For parking one side. Yeah. I mean, we just had, like, you know, I think it was last week, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, that bus accident yep. on Hamilton Street. Hamilton Street and Central Street, I think, are, are two worst roads as far as road width and traveling with yeah. that cars getting hit, whatever. I mean, especially on a Hamilton Street area, the club just opened back up again. Mm -hmm. It's busy. I mean, it, there's town parking lots right there. I understand people got to walk, but I mean, and those snow banks come in, that road gets even narrower, is that? Well, through you, Mr. Chair, we can certainly discuss it. We can add it to an agenda item for the next meeting. But any vote ultimately will be done by the council. Uh -huh. We'll have to go to subcommittee and we'll have to go to council. We can make a recommendation, either favorable or unfavorable, but the ultimate deciding authority will be the council. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you want to add that on the next agenda, just see me offline. And I, I just like that, maybe check into it or something. That's not a good idea. Do some research, I guess. Thank you. I wouldn't be supportive of one side parking for one reason. Pro <coughs> business counselor, those parking spots are so valuable on Central Street and Hamilton. We've already got uh, a shortage of parking. And even in the municipal parking lot when we redid it, they took parking spots out of it. So for myself, people that are investing in the downtown area need those parking spaces. Thank you. Councilor Dow. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm going to throw my copy out of it a minute. I just want to piggyback off of Kevin uh, about the removing them for the winter. My question to you, Chief, through you, Mr. Chairman, are they going to be orange instead of white? Uh, Mr. The Chairman, they, you can be whatever color you need them to be. White I just is more visible, I would think, but 
the DOT standard is green now. Green, okay. So we can go white, green, whatever color is. Right. Because uh, plain white just doesn't make it. Would be it, 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 You know, people need something bright to see it. Uh, <laughs> That's an easy fix. The other thing is uh, the parking on, on like uh, Hamilton Street down by uh, where some of the apartments are and even between the school there. And these pickup trucks nowadays, and even the big trucks, they have these mirrors that stick off about that far off the truck. And they just keep getting whacked because there's not enough room for the trucks to go by. Cars are fine. There are a lot of pickups and, and big trucks that travel that road. I would, I would think, you know, one-sided parking in certain areas, not the whole street, but certain areas would, would help out in some areas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Phil? All right. Well, three do, three do, uh, there's a lot of over there. Um, they're all reflective painted now. So anything that's white, green, orange, it's all reflective now. So when the okay. lights hit it or anything like that, it's going to stand out. Anyway, okay, so. thank you. I'm going to go with Councilor Dow first. And <laughs> thank you, Mr. Schrader. You, uh, chief question, isn't it? Couple, last year, I'm not sure, is a study to be Center Street one way? We discussed it before to be one way street that was discussed. That may have been done time. with the DPW director, but I would not know. I have no knowledge of that study. They was talking about it to be one way street because they're going to do the rotary with uh, yeah. and Hamilton. That might have been there. part of the engineering plan for that yeah. project, but I don't know. I think uh, that's a future. I think, I think, I think it's think supposed to be both ways. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think I was ever, decide, ever really decided to make it one way. It was discussed mm -hmm. on one of the boards. It might have been one way. Point. Yeah. I think Hook Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they was looking at Center Street yeah, as well because you know. Yeah. Yeah. That was okay. redevelopment. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Shenier. I agree with council housing, but you're going to be affecting businesses and taking away from them. Uh, you take those parking spots away, the people aren't going to go there. The barber shops go there for a short period of time. Uh, the little stores that there. It's going to affect. If you're going to look at one way, one side of poppy, look at the whole town. Go down the home street. You think it's a, it's good with the chariots going down there, <laughs> or every street? Every town is every street's that way. Just let them do their job, do the enforcement. They've been aggressive in their enforcement, and just you know, you're going to open up a can of worms, and you're going to open up those two streets. Thank you. All right, uh, Denise. Thank you. Um, I just, the temporary made sense because of, I was considering the same thing, the redevelopment of that area. You don't, if you do permanent, then you're throwing away something. So why not try temporary? But Chief, is there, is there a way, or Mr. Harding, um, that you could also mark, because listening to Mr. Dow too, obviously it's sort of triangular is what you're looking at compensating there. So it's sort of a, a lean and then wider out towards where the car is parked in front. But could you not mark, demark that with triangular um, you know, some sort of marking on the road as well as the cones. The, yes, yeah, the to, idea to would give be it a little bit yeah. of a, you know, like you do on the main street, where it's all marked up with every kind of line, and you know, there is. So that's the intention. Yeah. The picture. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't see the picture. Yeah. I'm sorry. It has paint on. I didn't get a picture. <laughs> all right, great. So triangular. Talk to the people out there. Then yeah. it will have paint. Good. Okay, that's all. Just okay. Sure. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, Just a quick comment. Uh, I go to a lot of other towns like Oxbridge and Webster, and, and they have school colors and town colors. And the Southbridge is always basically red and white. I don't know if we can reflect that in some of the stuff that we do with the lining of red and white. Just a suggestion. You go to you go to Oxbridge. It's got an orange crosswalk with white stripes. You go to Bartlett. I mean, excuse me, Webster. It's green with white stripes. You come to Southbridge for some reason. We don't wear our colors. I think maybe we should. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever is safe, I think yep. is the safest way to go. All right. If no one has anything else. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. All right. Okay. Agenda item number 10. Review and discuss adding a stop sign at Fisk Street and Cliff Street. Entertain a motion to recommend. Motion. Second. Second. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, uh, this is a strange one. I. I don't know one. I always thought there was a stop sign on Fifth Street. There's not. There hasn't been one in years. I don't have any idea why there isn't one. I don't know if it was ever stolen from that area, but there's no post, nothing no post. there. It's just it's a remarkable occurrence to me, and I recommend that we put a stop sign there mm -hmm. um, as soon as possible. I just don't understand how, when I first started many years ago, there was a sign there, and somehow over the years it just disappeared. So 
It was brought to my attention by a concerned resident, and I agree with that. <coughs> okay. Councilor Dow first. I think it was like a yield sign there before in the past. Correct, but it, well, yeah. whatever it was, in my opinion, needs to be a stop sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a yield sign on one point. Yeah. Mr. Lazar? Yeah, there was a yield sign there, but don't forget now, they have that restaurant up there, and a lot of traffic, they repaved that road, yeah, so, you know, no it is needed there. You know, it was something there that's all, you know, I'm, I'm not questioning the stop sign or yield, but it was just kind yeah, of... Yeah, you know, at one time, yeah, there was not much yeah. traffic there. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Forty years ago, I lived on Fish Street, and it was brought to Hamaclock's attention, and Hamaclock said that it didn't meet the criteria that's set forth by the state, and that's why the yield sign was put there. Mm -hmm. So can, that was 40 years yeah. ago. And I, can, and I can kind of elaborate on that a little bit. So what the criteria for the state, and I don't want to quote Mr. Clark, but it's a three-way stop sign that has certain criteria, and we're going to get into that on one of these agenda items. That absolutely does not meet a three-way stop sign criteria. But for a single stop sign, I'd rather err on the side of caution, because I was told by other DPW directors that I could not just add stop signs haphazardly in the community. But when I go look at that road, it needs a stop sign. Right. I, 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 argue, I, I challenge anyone to argue different. Yeah. Forty years ago, we tried to do that, and, and that was the thing: it was the state mm -hmm. ruled uh, that you just the town just can't put stop signs wherever they wanted to. They had to meet a certain criteria. They, they cannot put three-way stop signs mm -hmm. anywhere they wanted. So I'm not sure if maybe that was could have been the sticking point. Yeah. My, my memory, you know. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, logically, oh, seriously, logically, I mean that's that street needs one. Every other, every other basically dead end street coming into Reader Street has one. Common sense has a chance. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? All those in favor? Thank you. Agenda item number eleven: Review, discuss this, and request pertaining to the addition of blind person signage. In the area of 114 Litchfield Avenue, motion. entertain a motion. Second. <clears throat> Go ahead, Sean. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would say that, you know, I, I put on my DPW director hat here for a minute. So <laughs> the manual and uniform traffic control devices, <laughs> they don't recommend um, putting signs, you know, children at play or things like that because or blind children because studies have shown that there's no difference in speed, accidents, issues in those neighborhoods. But I would argue to say... Um, we have a disabled child. I think it's hard. To, it's pretty hard to argue against that when we have someone who's certified blind. We got a notice from Boston. I'm being contacted by social workers. Mm -hmm. I would rather, again, err on the side of caution, put the sign out in the neighborhood, and maybe it stops somebody from speeding. Through. I can't predict whether it will or not, but I would highly recommend if this goes forward. I wouldn't necessarily agree to putting signs everywhere in the community about children at play because if you're driving on a public way, you should be driving. In a, in a rural area, you should expect kids to be in the roads anyway, but that's neither here nor there. I would recommend putting a blind child sign in that neighborhood. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I think Chief was speaking on uh, Agenda 12, the stop sign. We're not on the 13 yet, I believe. Is that correct? We're on 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11, yeah. Oh, okay. I screwed up once tonight, not twice, just once. <laughs> 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 just one you had me thinking though, I was like, that was my mistake. Yeah, thank you. I stole a lot less. All right, anybody else? All those in favor? Thank you. Agenda item number 12. Dis review, discuss citizens' request for adding a stop sign on Ellis Road at the intersection of Torrey Road. Yeah. Entertain a motion. Make that motion. Second. Okay. So this one, Mr. Oh. Chair, it came to the Traffic Commission. Originally it was a request back in 2018 as a, uh, a three-way stop sign. The requirements for a three-way stop sign that we talked about earlier, it needs to have at least two accidents a year at that intersection. It needs to be at least, like, I think it's 6,000 cars a day have to go through that intersection. So Ellis and Torrey absolutely do not meet that criteria. But I would highly recommend a stop sign go because I think there's a yield sign there now. Mm -hmm. The traffic commission put it on a couple of years ago. Again, because we were kind of, we had a disagreement in the committee amongst committee members about whether a yield or a stop sign should go there. And I was, I was under the impression I couldn't just put a stop sign there. But I would say now after doing my research, I'm going to err again on the side of caution. We need to have a stop sign there. And I would highly recommend it. Okay. Councillor Steves, did you want to say something? Um, just something quick about the email that we had in our packet from uh, Tammy Gravel, talking about how how people sometimes will come flying down there 
going to or from school and nearly hit people coming off of that street. We did, and through you, Mr. Chair, and again, certainly not you know speaking negatively about anybody, but we we have enforced that. Uh, we have aggressively enforced speed violations on that road. Most of the people speeding are going to the school teaching. I'm sure they are. So we had some issues. I had Dr. Villar. <laughs> and again, not, I'm just telling you, speaking <laughs> facts. We, we had Dr. Villar put out a, uh, some info to the staff up there saying, the police are going to be out again aggressively enforcing this. So if you're coming from whatever community, you can't go 60 in a 30 mile an hour road area. So we're working on it. But this stop sign will help. Yep. Uh, aggressive enforcement will help. We've met with the com um, reporting party in that neighborhood. There's a couple of them. Yeah. They have some serious issues and concerns. I understand that. I respect I that. Do. But yeah. we certainly cannot put a, a three-way stop sign there. You know, it doesn't meet the criteria. Right. But a stop sign on that road or on Ellis Road is absolutely the correct mm -hmm. thing to do, I believe. Well, I agree. I think that the issue, as far as Tory goes, is it's really not our section of Tory. It's when you, it's when you get into Charlton and it starts getting really curvy. It's when you get to our town, it becomes yeah, more or less straight. Right. That's where they accelerate. Just like with just like with You all set, yeah. Councilor? Councilor Chief, you're saying they're speeding on Tory or they're speeding on Ellis? Tory. Tory. Ellis is very hard. I've been on Ellis You don't have a road. You have to be in a helicopter to be speeding on the stop sign is going to be on Golfwood? On Ellis. No. On Ellis. In other words, you're coming out of Ellis as a stop sign. On Ellis. Yes. 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 So I lived there for seven years, of course, some time ago. But I was on the road a, a week or so ago and came to the end and went, Where's, there's no stop sign here? There's, there was a, I'm telling you, when I lived on that road, way back, there was a stop sign there. Because when you could, that's a, Blind corner. Mm -hmm. Why in the world couldn't you stop? That just—it's scary. You know, like you know, it was the weirdest thing. Really but I, I remember thinking, yeah. there, right. I cannot believe there's no stop sign. So I don't know if someone's out stealing stop signs at night, giving away a Christmas presents, <laughs> but we <laughs> need stop signs. I am like 99.9. Yeah, it was. You're right. <laughs> right on the corner. Right side. Are you all set? Thank you. Yeah. Right. Anybody yeah, else? All right. All those in favor? Thank you. General item number 13, review discuss citizens' request pertaining to adding a blind drive sign in the area of 183 Brentwood Drive. Entertain a motion to recommend to I'll make that motion. Second. Through you, Mr. Chair, anyone that's familiar with the community, uh, very familiar with the house, uh, the corner it's on, terrible location, sight lines are awful. Again, not blind child, this would be a blind drive just to kind of alert people driving on that road. But there's a residence there, and I would recommend it. Okay. This is this is the house. It's right after the dip and curving in, yep. curving into London on Hill, right? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Any other? Discussion? I just want to agree with the chief. I mean, I, I I know this house and I know where it is. And it's, if they're coming out of the driveway and someone's coming around that corner, that's it. They're getting grinned. I agree yes. with them 100 percent. Yeah, definitely needed to. All right. Anybody else? All those in favor? Okay. Agenda item number 14. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. My police hat back on. Discuss sign, re discuss sign replacement on Lair Show Way. So, are you going to discuss it? I'm just going to discuss it. I'm going to open this up to uh, Mr. Lair Show. You had some questions about Lair Show Way. Yeah, we discussed that at the last meeting. I was just wondering where it's at. Okay. Uh, uh, the town manager is still here? He was here minute ago. Okay. Well, Phil, maybe you can but answer. But I think Phil just, just the replacement prior yeah. to the meeting. I um, when I order street signs and everything, I try to order them in abundance because we pay one flat shipping rate and I don't want to pay seventy five dollars for just two signs. Yeah. So they are. I checked with them today when I saw this on the agenda, and I called them up and they said I should have them next week. So okay. They'll be up and as soon as I get them in, they'll be put on. <laughs> I just, want to, I just want to say we appreciate it because uh, this has been a long time coming with a lot of avenues and a lot of promises, and I thank you. You're welcome. Well, you can get to the old ones if you want. All right, agenda item number 15, update on the rental generator at the South Street pumping station. Um, Phil, did you want to speak to this? I, the only thing I can say is that um, the generator is a year out, so I mean I just kind of got a little bit of going at me when I was leaving today, 
Um, it was scheduled to be in this coming May, but now it got pushed back to what, May of 2023, no, 2024. So um, they have to keep paying the, the rental fee for the one they have now. Um, and that's pretty much all I was told about it, real briefly, because. Okay. Trying to get myself familiarized with everything that's going on, but <clears throat> that's all the information I had. Kevin, did you want to ask any more about it? I was the one who brought this up. I brought it up six months ago, and she told us that it was three months out. Now it's another year. It's another year. It's getting worse. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. I'm waiting for the fire department to order one that they need, and that's probably going to be three, four years out. You never know. <laughs> I was just curious, but Mike, is that generator going to sit right there all winter long? It's been there for what, a year now already? At least, well, at least that, that. Yeah. at least that. And all that. Is there a... It's the whole rede redesign issue that they had to do down there because the old generator is inside and now to meet the new criteria, you'd have to make a bigger housing for it and everything like that. So I know we, when I first took on the operations job, we were going through designs because I worked with the sewer department for 10 whatever many years. And we're going through redesigns and trying to figure out how you can do it. And I mean, there's been so many different design issues. And I just think to make it a flatten it out, put the controls on one side, put a generator on the left, and be <coughs> done with it. Get it off the road. Yeah, good idea. Okay, you want something? No? All right. Jenna, item number 16 update on sidewalks on know. East Main Street in front of 5 K Street. Uh, Kevin, did you want to ask about that again? Yeah, I brought this originally up on our November 7th meeting, and Phil said he had a meeting within days coming up with them that he was going to discuss it, and on our meeting on the 16th, we were told that it was going to be done by the end of the month, mm -hmm. and today's the end of the month. It's still not done. Is there... It's a public safety hazard. Down. It is a public. And there are so many vehicles parking on that sidewalk. It I've been in. I've been in many email battles, many phone call battles with the people down there about it. Um, myself and interim uh, director Jackson have now told them that no permits, no nothing, going to be signed up until the vehicles are off that sidewalk and the sidewalk is repaired. So is that something we can have that? I don't know, I, I just, I think it's, I think the town's getting taken advantage of. I mean, they've known about this, and they're not doing anything about it. I agree we should not sign permits or whatever mm -hmm. until it's done, but is there something we can have the manager send in writing, or, I don't know, something really? we can hold it to make sure it gets right. done? I mean, it's cold weather, so. Myself and Butch have a meeting down there on this Friday also. You're more than welcome to join us so you can express your concerns. Cause I, am actually I mean, I know you're doing everything, and I, I believe me, I appreciate everything you're doing. But it, it's just, that sidewalk's bad. I mean, how you, it is, it's you, you see it, it's, everybody's now, they, when the trucks are on that, parked mm -hmm. all day long, people are walking in the road. and They, they told me today, when I talked to them at 9 o'clock this morning, there'd be no more vehicles parked on that sidewalk. I, I went by there at 11 o'clock. There was two big trucks there today. There was three. <laughs> three. So I made a call right away saying, you just told me there's going to be nobody parked on these sidewalks. And next thing you know, everybody's parked on them. So I'm going to have a discussion with the chief. And from now on, any vehicle that's parked on that sidewalk, I'd like them to be ticketed. Because of the simple fact that they're not listening to us at all. So. No, and I agree. Sounds like Nuco. Yeah. Okay. Steve, he just answered my question. Tag them. That's what I was say. Tag them, and they'll learn. Yeah. Th thank you. Council oh, Council right across the street. Why don't they use it? <laughs> Council exactly. Is the K Street is owned by? Uh, is anybody talking shit in the one about it? I have. I've had a couple of conversations. Has he been responsive to it? He's been he's been on them just as well as I've been on them. It's the it. sidewalk on the delivery. Oh no, I don't. Council Down. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We can't ask the police to put those uh, uh, temporary uh, no parking signs. I'll put them there. You know, that was, that was, at least if yeah. you want to ticket them, at least you have something they don't park there. You'll, you'll see them tomorrow. But the laws are not windy. That's a bad idea. It's also going to be windy. Those don't get that sidewalk. <coughs> sidewalk. Oh, look at that sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Is it the trucks doing the sidewalk? Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're killing the whole sidewalk. They got pictures of it before. There's a section right? of concrete missing and it was full of water and turned to ice. Mm -hmm. So citations and pictures so that the bill can be sent to the company yeah. instead of the town. They tag the trucks. It's the only way they're going to work. Tag them, pictures, and then make them pay for the repair. I mean, the problem is that they're probably kind of ignoring it because that's all part of the East Main Street re redesign project as well. So they're kind of taking advantage. Yeah, that's going to be a while for the to destroy it. It's not acceptable. Right. But I'm just saying, yeah, that's one of the things they did bring up to me in yeah. our conversations. And I was like, that's, that's a year or so off. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Totally now. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Okay. So is that how I get these two? We're going to move on to agenda item number 17 update on private contractors for snow plowing. So what's going on with that? Myself and Glenn have reached out to many of the contractors. Let them know that the bids are out there. Everything's ready, formal, and, and okay. all we keep getting back is they don't want to come to the air to plow. Okay. <laughs> That's all we keep Mr. getting Lazo. back. The reason why some of them don't want to plow this, these streets in Southbridge is because they'll wreck their truck and their plows. The yeah. roads are terrible. The other thing is, the insurance required. It's changed. Did yeah. they change that? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't here for the last uh, meeting. It was changed? Yes. Yeah. They changed it? Well, that's, that's a positive. They, I didn't know they changed it. But the roads are so bad. I plowed one year for Jeff Russo. He asked me. He was, he was a shorter guy. I blew his cutting edge off four times plowing certain streets in this town. We had to rebolt it every, every time. And it's ridiculous. And that was two years ago, and it's not any better. So, I mean, I don't blame the guys not wanting to do it. Thank you. Kevin? Phil, do we have any guys, like uh, private guys that sit in town trucks that applied for this year? We have no one that applied this year for private. We've had. Um, that's two. sitting in a town. That's oh, sitting so in a town. Yes, we've had two. Yes, we've yeah. had two. So, are they going to come forward to us for recommendations or anything? Reason why I'm asking. I know. Is, did they for a temporary pod driver? Did they have that come through too? Yes, we used to always vote. Yeah. Them. And, and the reason why I was the one who brought this up because the reason why is, and I'm going to say his name. Ray Coet has been plowing for the town for. Yeah, he's been plowing for the town for numerous years. He's at every storm, but I think what we have to do is look at the pay scale that these guys come in and plow on and do some adjustments or at least look into it because I think they're way off whack as far as their pay scale goes. I mean, these guys are coming in at 20, 30 hours nonstop and mm -hmm. I'm being told that they're not getting time and a half or hours that they should be and <coughs> I think their hourly rate for somebody that's been doing it five, six, seven years is, is extremely low. I mean, I think we should look into that and address it, in my opinion. I mean, for, for what those, I know what they get paid from what I approved last year, and I wouldn't sit in a truck for that. Probably something we're going to have to take a look at if we can't get anybody to come here. So. But, I mean, at least we have two guys now, so we can, and I think that could be a factor why we're not getting guys in. I mean, other towns are paying a lot more than what we are for, for say, a Ray Cowett position. Mm -hmm. All right. Just question, has anybody done a, a rate study on that? I mean, do you have the listing from other communities? I'm just curious. I don't know. Because back when we were talking about all the time, over time, <coughs> time, making 20 phone calls to various communities, they're very open for coming about that information to me. But I'm just saying, we make statements like everybody's Maybe paying more. I'd be curious to know what those, what they are. You know, let's let's make sure we have the accurate information. And I don't mean they don't deserve it. Uh, but if we're going to make a statement, then let's make sure we're really accurate about the statement so that we can know what to pay, too. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we can uh, certainly conduct a, a salary analysis and we can conduct it in the next meeting so you can make a decision okay. on what that rate could be. Because sometimes it's a range. Mm -hmm. I like for it to be approved by subcommittee first before we move forward. To move forward. Sounds like a good we, idea. Thank you. The seller so just curious. I mean, that's you're going to actually actually. We're actually going to call actuals. different okay. communities and get okay. the you know actuals. Not I'm part of not the, like some, I'm part of a membership for uh, throughout the uh, Massachusetts. Okay. Of all each all, every HR director we and, and the assistant town managers we all learn the same and we talk to each other yeah. and it's easy to get that information. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So, sure. All right. Thank, thank you. Anything else? 
Motion to adjourn. Motion to second. All those in favor? All right, thank you. This motion, this meeting is adjourned at 7 or 6.45. Huh? Thank you.